Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now today we're gonna we're gonna approach the the subject of um, breeding, and um, I thought we'd just put together this little short little video really today, where we're gonna cover um, some beginner things that we can do to start our journey on breeding spiders now many of you subscribers you know tune into the channel because you like to see the breeding stuff that we do and um and to be fair we we try and film um as much of the breeding attempts as we can especially when we've got new species that we've not done before we always try and cap capture them on film it's not always easy um many of the pokies We've, we've caught some of them on film, but many of them are very nocturnal in their, in their attempts at breeding. So it's very difficult for us to try and get decent footage. And if you can't get decent footage, there's not a lot of point in having any, any footage, in my opinion. I think it's, it's, we want to see stuff nice and clear. And um, hopefully, over the last couple of years, we've put, a, put together uh, a good few now of um, breeding attempts and many that have been very successful, and we've watched them. Um, we've seen them through from the actual pairing all the way through to egg sacs and then to us removing the egg sacs. Or sometimes we allow them to hatch out with mum. So there's many, many different things. And we're often asked, how, how do you get ready? How do you start? What do you do? Um, so I thought we'd cover some of the bare basics of, um, of breeding spiders. Now, I guess what we should do is think about what type of spiders, what are good spiders, good beginner spiders to start your breeding projects with. Now, presumably, you've been keeping your spiders a little while, you're getting nice and comfortable with what you're doing, how you handle them, how you deal with them, you know, and when different little problems arise, you're starting to get your head around, sorting them out, and keeping your spider nice and healthy. So one of the first things we need to do is make sure that we have a healthy female. Now, if you want to go down the route of, um, of breeding spiders, obviously we need an adult female spider. And one of the ways that we check to make sure that that female is actually eligible to be breeding is I check the epigastric furrow on our females. And if these are, are dark in colour, they almost go like caramelised in colour. Um, if they go like that sort of colour, then I am pretty certain that she is viable to breed. She is of a breeding age. Now, it doesn't always come down to size either. Sometimes we've had very small females um, within a species that you, at first glance you think, nah, that's too young to breed, too small. But quite often these spiders will actually breed. Um, and they've been successful as well. So it's not always about size. We often hear people say, oh, you know, they need to be four, five, six inches, and, and then they're breedable. We've had them half that size and they've bred, depending on species. So it's a, it's a very, um, uh, very open-ended sort of thing that we can check on. Now, the other thing is, is what type of species should we be attempting first off? Um, and I always think many of the Samapayas are really, really, really good spiders to um, have a go at. Uh, the Aminia um, are very, very cool, very pretty spider as well. We've also got the Cambridgei. Again, these are arboreal spiders. Um, nice and easy. Then we can look at um, Avic Avix. Again, a nice gentle spider. Where pairings, all of these spiders, pairings are generally very good. And um, don't hold too many problems. And quite often, our males get out alive. Which is another important thing that we'll touch on in a minute. Now, um... When it comes to things like terrestrial spiders, I think one of the best spiders to attempt breeding 
first off is maybe the Balfouri. They are a very, very easy, simple spider to breed. Um, also, the golden blue leg baboon, the Harpictera, another good spider. The OBT is another good breeding spider. You know, these are all spiders that generally will pair up nice and sensibly, not too much hassle. They tend to drop their sacks fairly early as well, anything really between two and six months, but most of them are dropping their sacks within two months. And, uh, and then we can start to keep an eye on that. So the breeding is quite free flowing and it's quite quick, which as a beginner is what you want. You want to be able to maintain that excitement and that interest in what you're breeding. Because if you've got to wait a year for something to drop an egg sac, and all that time you're, you're, you're beating yourself up, are you doing it right? Is this right? Is that right? You know, we want things that are going to happen fairly quickly as beginners. We need that fast movement to keep us buzzing, really. So, yeah, the our pictures are good, uh, the OBTs. Now, these are all spiders that um, are, again, in the realms of being in the intermediate type of spider for um, our general care and handling. So, you know, you need to be on the ball. You need to be sort of there. But as a breeding spider, these are what I class as nice, easy spiders to start off with. There's plenty of time to attack the hard spiders, you know. And by that, we mean spiders that take up a lot more conditioning, um, a lot more care. Uh, some of them need to have seasonal changes, which means we have to play around with humidities, temperatures, all these different things. And this can cause problems because sometimes we can't do it all in the one room. If we've got a spider that needs to be cooled down for a period of time, it needs to go somewhere else that's cooler than the room that we keep all our other spiders in. So there's lots of mucking around to do. So the spiders that we've mentioned, the OBTs, the Avic Avic, the Samopaeus genus, all of them spiders take very little in the way of conditioning. And people get really hung up on this conditioning thing. You know, what is conditioning? We need to get our spider in a position where it is physically fit enough to breed. So the first things we're looking for is a spider that is mature enough, which is something only time can do. We need a mature spider. And then the conditioning is the parts that we can do. So we want to get that spider in tip-top health. We want to get it uh, where it's not due a molt. So with all of our spiders here, it doesn't matter whether they're easy or hard spiders, what we do is we literally we make sure that our spider has molted out, freshly molted out. Then we can start planning our breeding project with that particular spider. Now, um, once it's molted, we normally leave them for around anywhere really between sort of six and 12 weeks, roughly speaking, before we would attempt to put a male in with that spider. Now, if we're looking at um, the spiders that we've mentioned, most of them on a regular feeding regime or whatever will molt out as adults. They will molt out once, maybe twice a year. So we get a good long spell. We would get on average six to eight months from it first molting to when it wants to molt again. And the reason we need to beat that second molt is because if we pair our spider and then it molts, We've lost that pairing. It is no good. She will not produce a viable egg sac. So it's very, very important that we catch it between the first molt, we pair them, we get the egg sac, and then she molts. If we pair them and then she molts again, we won't get an egg sac. So you would have failed, or your spider would have failed. Now this can come down to things like feeding, because when our females are done, we pair them up, we give them a little bit extra food to help them because they are actually producing eggs. They're going to have to produce this silk. So we want them in A1 condition. And if you've watched our videos, you'll see many of our female spiders, they come out from actually having that egg sac 
in the same condition that they went in to the breeding program. So, and this is what we're looking for. We're looking for nice, strong, fit spiders to carry out the procedures. Now, in terms of actually how we put our spiders together, many of our spiders, as we said before, we film them, which means we physically watch the whole thing. And this can sometimes take anything from like five or 10 minutes to literally a whole day. We have spent a whole day before now watching a tank with two spiders in it that, well, they're just being real slow. But sometimes some species are like that. The ones we've mentioned, the easier ones, generally tend to get it on fairly quick. And we can keep an eye on them and we can secure our male, make sure he's fairly safe. The biggest thing we can do with, with doing this first time round is giving our males plenty of space to escape. So if we're going to do them for argument's sake, let's say we've got, we got two in like our bra blast tubs here. We would literally, this, this would in fact sort of be our female. So we take the lid off and this would have our male in it. This is, these are empty by the way at the moment. This would have our male in it. And what we would do is we would stand them together side by side like that. And our male, in his own time, he will move over, or she may move over to him, you never know. But they will eventually find each other. And then the mating process will begin. The courtship will start. We don't, as a general rule, push our male to our female. Um, another golden tip when you're breeding is I have found never under any circumstances touch your female sometimes with our males we can guide them gently to where we want if they're going the wrong way we can turn them around and put them back the other way nine times out of ten if we touch our females they tend to be a little bit more jumpy and a little bit more touchy so it's not a good idea we want her to stay as calm as possible and this means when we bring our tubs in we don't want to you know, if this had our female when it's got the lid on it and it's on the desk, we don't want to pick her up and, oh, you know, like that, and put her down a table. This is going to upset her. So we want to be really gentle. We want to be very, very slow, take the lid off nice and gently. We do not want to upset her. And then we put them together like that, side by side, and we allow the male to find the female. And this generally works out well. And if your female is calm from the very beginning, there's a real good chance your male is going to walk out of there alive. You upset your female, there's a good chance she is not going to be in the mood for pairing and uh, she's not going to be happy to see him. So we've got to be really careful. Look after our females. The girls have got to be nice and calm. Now, with some spiders like our pokies, we can utilise this type of setup. Now, this is a fly screen um, net that is often used for hatching butterflies, keeping stick insects in, and things like that. And it's a fully secured unit with a zip um, on the back. I should have put this around the other way. I'll turn it around. And we have a zip here. So this whole front here opens up. And as you can see, it's closed at the minute. Now, we have an actual fact got. Um, a pair of Metallica in here. I'll turn that round there like that. If I get, um, I don't know if I've got a light here. I can perhaps. Can we see them? Yeah, see them there. So this is our female on the top, and our and our male is down at the bottom. There's our male. So what we do with it in this kind of setup is we literally put their enclosures inside this net. So this is a secure unit. And what this does is we the, the larger um, container there is the female and the smaller one is where the male was living. So we put them side by side, take the lids off, we close the container up and then we leave them alone. And we quite often we will put them in like this just before we get, we turn all the lights off in the room, and we will leave them in this overnight. Now, this is a very, very successful method of pairing spiders, 
And if you're new to pairing and everything else, and you're a little bit worried about how you handle the spider and things like that, this is an ideal way to go forward. Because you put your tubs in, you take your lids off and you leave them to it. You don't do anything else. And during the night, they will both crawl out of their containers and start moving around inside this enclosure. They can't get out of this, so they move around. This has two things that it does. It allows you some comfort in the fact that you're not having to deal with them at the moment. And also, it allows our male free roam. So should she try and get a hold of him, he can disappear. He can run away. He can keep out of her way for the rest of the night, if needs be, until the morning when we will come in and we will catch them up and put them back in their respective homes. Oh, excuse me. Now, this is an easy, easy thing to do. Not difficult at all. We can use a catch cup inside the net or quite often or not, what I normally do is I coax our spider up onto the roof of the net and then literally I just put their home up against it and they will walk down into their home. And then I just put the lid on. So it's a very, very simple and easy way of doing things. Now, obviously the main drawback is we don't get to see what goes on. So we're not sure, but we can, can. There's still ways we can learn and we can find out what's happened. We can literally, once we get our male back in, if he was successful and he's paired with his female, he will make a new sperm web. Literally, within 24 hours of him being back in his home, he will make a new sperm web. And we can see that sperm web. Now, I can hear you all saying, well, how on earth are you going to tell whether it's a sperm web or whether he's made a bit of web for whatever? Well, I can show you that right here. Because this male has actually been in with a different female, this Metallica. And uh, this is his second female. If we look in here, I'm going to come around this way. If we look in here, this web in here, I'll get my paintbrush. This web in here, this is the remains of a sperm web. Now you can see where he's done it from the bark to the side of the enclosure. And it, they create this hammock. And then what happens is, this thick webbing on this front edge, this is the bit that he's pulled through with his pedipouts. And what he would have done, this here would have looked like this originally. He would have laid his packet of sperm on top of this, or underneath this web. Then he comes around the other side, so he's on top. And then he literally loads his pedipalps up into it. While he's doing that, it creates this edge on the web. And what he's done is he's folded the web down. So we can tell, when we come in, I know that this is a sperm web. This isn't just a bit of web that he's made up. This is a sperm web. So what we will do now is we will take this sperm web off. There you go. It's gone. We can take that away. We can put the piece of bark back up, like so. And that is back ready for him to go back home. Now, when... When we put him back in, give him 24 hours, he will make another web, which will go from here to here. And he will create that hammock again across the side of the tank here. And that's how we know. If he makes a sperm web, we know that he had a successful pairing with our female. If he doesn't make a sperm web, then there's a very, very good chance he never actually got to pair with her. So we can always pop him back in again. So it's all to do, the sperm web is what is giving us the information that we require. So it's very, very uh, good that we can actually do that. Now what we're going to do, we're actually going to put these spiders back in their respective homes. So I think that would be a good idea, because tonight we're going to put a, a different pair of spiders in here. So we'll, we'll leave them, we'll get them out so that this, this room is clear for another one. So what we want to do is we want to work out who is who. That's our female up the top, and this is our male down the bottom. 
So what we can do, we've got our female. We're going to put put her piece of bark back up like that. We're going to fill her water bowl as well. So she's done. This is the lid to her enclosure. So what we're going to do now is we are going to put that over here like so. And we're literally going to scoop her up. Just like that. That's it, she's in. Straight that back behind her piece of bark, which is where she feels secure. So we keep the box in the net and we put the lid on. Notice the male hasn't gone anywhere. This is because we've been extra careful and we've not disturbed him. So that's our female in, in her home. We do the same with the male. So we're going to give him some fresh water. Fill that up. Now remember with our males, we have to condition our males just as much as we do our females. It's very important that he's kept hydrated. So because he's at the bottom here, we're going to just gently move him up with a brush. You notice there's no, there's no, no aggression going on here. We're going to put that back behind him. The only thing is, is I can't see. So we're now going to go there. We're going to just walk him back down. Hopefully you can see this. Using the tub. There you go. One Metallica back in his box. And we just put the lid back on. So we just touch his back toe there. You don't want to squash his toe. There we go, he's in. We put that on there. One secured Metallica. He's gone straight down to have a drink. Look at that. Straight in there, he's having a little drink. To be fair, he's been out on the tiles all night. He's probably a little bit tired. He would have had a busy night. So uh, he's, in, he's in need of a drink. So that means now that um, our enclosure is all ready again for the next inhabitant. And we can try them out. And this is a very, very good method especially when you've got a few spiders in which to deal with. So the other main thing that we need to do now is we're not worried about our male. We don't need much information from him. But what we do need is we need to know that we've had a breeding attempt with our female. So we get our masking tape. Because you know how tight we are here in the beastie room. We get our masking tape. And then we're going to put down the date that we paired our spider. So what is the date today? I don't know. Is it the 9th, 7th, 8th? What is the date today? Hold on. We'll always check our phone, can't we? It's the 11th of December. Sunday the 11th. So we put these together on the 10th. So we'll put that down. So we write on there paired. Because we're hoping they're paired. On the 10th of the 12th, 23. Yeah, so that is all the information that we need. So we literally take that off of there and we put that, that goes on the front of our box. So we've got Metallica there, so we know what spider it is. And then we put that on the front and then she can then go back on the shelf and she will get fed and carried on as normal and then what we do then is we'll give it about a week and then we'll try her again and we'll put her in and hopefully we'll get a second pairing now in the meantime he will now go back on the shelf and we will just keep an eye on him and wait for that sperm web that's our cue that he is ready to go again and also the cue that we had a successful pairing when these guys were first put together now, we can do exactly the same thing with our terrestrial spiders. They can be put inside here 
it allows the male's room to get away. And this is what's most important. We want him to survive so that he can carry on and either pair with another one or we can move him onto someone else so he can pair with theirs. So really the conditioning size, to just to sum these things up, conditioning, we just want our female in the best possible condition. We don't want her overweight. We just want her fit and healthy. And if you watched our feeding video last time, you'll see how we actually go about feeding our spiders and keeping them in that A1 condition. That is the most important thing. And for beginner spiders, that is about all the conditioning that we need. So then we just keep them hydrated, keep them with water, and we steadily feed them. Once they've been paired, we don't heavily feed them. We give them smaller meals, and we just watch our spider and see what happens. And you will often see a change in their behavior in how they web up their enclosure. That's often the first key as to what's going on. So, all right, hopefully that would have sort of like helped out a little bit. If there's any questions, put them down in the comments um, and we can go a little bit more in depth in another video. I thought we'd just literally cover the bare basic bones. But don't forget, you know, stick with the easy spiders first. Try them first. Uh, another really good one to actually try out, actually, are the Villicelli. Um, and also, mm, yeah, probably st stick with the Villicelli because they're very quick. You can literally pair them two weeks, have an egg sac, and then wait six weeks, you've got babies. So another really, really cool little spider to, to have an attempt with. And also a nice one, actually, because they're very small. So you don't have to frighten the life out of yourself trying to um, separate them and do things like that. But yeah, any doubts? Check back into our pairing videos and you'll see and hear what we get up to and how we do it. And you'll see these easy spiders that I've spoke about, we've done videos on exactly them. So check them out and then have a go yourselves. It really is the best part of spider keeping. All right then, but don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.